Hello everybody and welcome! The recently released Kerbal Space Program Update 1.10 nicknamed Shared Horizons brought new focus to the European Space Agency ESA and the Ariane rocket series, which has been going strong since the 1970s. While doing my fun Rosetta mission with ESA scientist Charlotte Götz, link in the description below, I realized something embarrassing for a European space fan. I know more about the ins and outs of American and Russian spacecraft than our own. So let's find out more together while also highlighting not this stock Ariane 5 that comes with KSP 1.10, but my own take on the new and improved Ariane 6 that should have its maiden flight in 2021. To understand how Ariane came to be, we have to think about the Cold War and how Europe felt the need to also have spaceflight capabilities. After World War II, then-French President Charles de Gaulle issued the doctrine of an autonomous access to space. The first iteration, fittingly called Europa, fell short, but France didn't want to leave space to Russia and the United States, so they proposed the Ariane project and managed to get Germany and the UK on board. The result was Ariane 1, which had its first flight on December 24, 1979. It offered a unique design in regards to its payload, or rather payloads, plural. Ariane rockets were always designed with the capability of carrying either one large or two smaller satellites into geostationary transfer orbit, thus reducing the costs for launch. Buy one rocket, get two satellites into orbit. Ariane 1 flew 11 times with just two failed launches and was succeeded by Ariane 2 in 1986, which used a more capable engine and different fuel mixture, increasing the maximum payload capacity from 1850 to 2175 kg to GTO. Ariane 2 only flew six times with one failure. In the meantime, Ariane 3 which was basically the same rocket but had solid rocket boosters strapped to its sides, was already active since 1984. The boosters further increased the payload capacity to 2700 kg to GTO. Like the first Ariane, it flew 11 times, but with only one failure. Ariane 4 then became the workhorse of Europe's space agency ESA and various telecommunication providers in need of geostationary satellites. It was in service from 1988 until 2003 in multiple variants and was launched 116 times with just three failures on its record. Which of course leads us to the still active iteration Ariane 5, which started its service in 1996. It also can be configured for multiple different mission requirements, being capable of getting up to 20 tons into low Earth orbit. For instance, an ATV resupply vehicle to the ISS or 8 tons into geostationary orbit. That's almost twice of what the most powerful Ariane 4 variant was capable of. Nowadays, Ariane 5 is seen as one of the most reliable rockets ever, with 103 of 108 successful missions. But its maiden flight was embarrassing to say the least. Shortly after launch, the rocket tipped to its side and self-destructed, resulting in a complete loss of vehicle and payload. But luckily, no human casualties. It was determined that multiple software issues caused the launch failure, among them an old routine from Ariane 4 that was not adapted to the new rocket. The problems were identified and quickly resolved and Ariane 5 continues to fly to this day. Interestingly, one of the intended purposes of the vehicle was to serve as launcher for the ill-fated Hermes spaceplane. That plane was designed to deliver up to three crew members and three tons of cargo into low Earth orbit. It would replace the second stage and payload fairings of the Ariane 5, consisting of the space plane proper and a service module that would be jettisoned before re-entry. Hermes never took flight and was cancelled in 1993. And now we finally come to Europe's new rocket. Like its predecessor, Ariane 6 relies on a liquid hydrogen core stage and second stage as well as solid rocket boosters. But compared to Ariane 5, there will be two variants from the start. 
Arian 6-2 with 2 and Arian 6-4 with 4 side boosters. Shockingly, the new vehicle does not offer vastly improved payload capabilities over Arian 5, but it does lower launch costs significantly, from up to $220 million down to $75 million for the 2-booster variant and $115 million for the 4-booster model. This is still more expensive than what SpaceX is charging for a Falcon 9, but Arian will be able to once again deploy two satellites with one launch and will try to compete with the current king of commercial launchers using that as a selling point. And of course I had to recreate the new launch vehicle in Kerbal Space Program. It is significantly larger than the stock Arian 5 that came with KSP 1.10, but that is because I made it to scale using 5 meter parts since the rocket's real diameter is going to be 5.4 meters. I also used the new flag feature to paste those Arian 6 logos on there as well as the tank texture. While the maximum payload the real 64 variant will be able to carry to low Earth orbit is 22 tons, this here can deliver more than 100 tons into low carbon orbit. Even with all the unnecessary visual fluff I added like an oversized engine bell. The flight to orbit is going to be fairly ordinary. First the solid boosters assist the single Vulcane 2.1 engine getting the launcher off the ground. After booster separation and after the core stage is spent, the second stage with its Vinci engine takes over. Its main advantage over the predecessor in the Arian 5 is its capability to restart up to 5 times. At least over the still active variant of the Arian 5, the ECA. The original Arian 5G and variants up to the current ECA used a different engine capable of restarts. Restarting the engine in flight makes more complicating orbital maneuvers possible and also makes the delivery of multiple payloads more flexible. Fortunately, in Kerbal Space Program every engine can be restarted as often as the player likes. Unless you install mods like Realism Overhaul that make the game a lot more realistic but also a lot harder. The way Arian is able to deliver two large payloads with one launch is thanks to double fairings. First the outer fairing deploys, revealing the first payload. After it is sent on its way, the cylindrical second fairing is jettisoned. In reality it flies away in one piece, but since KSP 1.10 has a bug which prevents decoupling parts within the fairing under certain conditions, I had to deploy it the old-fashioned way. No cool visuals for us, sorry. After that, the second payload can be put into its desired orbit. We don't know exactly when the real Arian 6 will be launched. The only, very broad date that is being touted is 2021. A few customers have already signed on, among them the European Galileo navigation system as well as some ESA payloads like the JUICE probe to explore Jupiter's moons, as well as Comet Interceptor, which Charlotte Goetz is involved with and we also talked about during our interview or playing session, whatever you want to call it. While we don't have any launch date, every communication from ESA and the Ariane group I could find claimed that the production for Ariane 6 is on schedule. Barring any additional global crises coming our way in the upcoming months, it looks like we will see it fly next year. It potentially could deliver a payload to Mars as part of the ambitious Mars sample return mission ESA and NASA are working on. NASA's Perseverance rover, set to launch next week on an Atlas V, is the first puzzle piece in a complex and challenging mission. But that is something I want to talk about in more detail next week. Me, I'm excited to see Ariane 6 flying next year. Yes, I know, many space enthusiasts consider it already outdated and there are plans for an Arian Next, a reusable launch vehicle that will likely copy the successful formula SpaceX perfected for the Falcon 9, but until that is ready to fly, we are going to see a lot of Arian 6 for years to come. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies, the links are in the description. Thanks for watching, goodbye.